Tell me when I'm We are live. We are live again in the Collard Valley Cook's Kitchen. I am making a granny chocolate cream pie. And while the meringue on it is cooking, we're going to make a hamburger steak and some fried potatoes. So are you ready? Here we go. I'm ready. First thing we're going to do is separate the eggs. Now, granny always cooked hers, of course, on the stove top. But I do mine a little bit different. It's the same ingredients, the same pie. And if you've never tried to do it this way, I'm gonna get some shells in my, you should try it. So you're gonna use four eggs. You're gonna separate them because we're gonna use the whites as the meringue and the yellows in the pudding. Let go. There you go. That was a little bitty egg. Boy, it was stubborn. Quite a small egg for it to be in the large egg compartment. Hmm. All right, let me wash my hands a little bit. We're going to be doing a lot again tonight. I hope y'all are ready. I don't think our lights are on. Turn them on. All right. There you go. Move the sound away. For now, it's sitting there. For now. All righty. The easiest way to do this is to mix your dry ingredients up first with a whisk. So, you put in... I'm going to use cornstarch first, then I'm going to dip it in the cocoa. So you put in a cup of sugar. Oh, and you pre-bake your crust. So you need to have your crust baked and nice and golden before you start your pudding, okay? So you got one cup of sugar, three tablespoons of cornstarch, And Granny just used a regular old tablespoon. Um, not one like this. And four, let's see, two heaping tablespoons of cocoa. Somebody said they made this pie the other day. It didn't have enough flavor, so let's pile the cocoa in it. When I say heaping, I mean heaping, like that, okay? So really, you're putting in four tablespoons, probably a little bit more than four. She probably didn't heap her tablespoons, she said. Show them what a tablespoon is for the people that don't know. Some people don't know what you're talking about. You mean a regular old tablespoon? Yeah, some people won't know that, Tim. So, this? Granny would have just used this. That's a tablespoon, not a regular spoon. Like yeah, not a teaspoon. The big spoons. Yeah. Some, some people don't know. know that. Some of them don't, I promise you. Okay. We've got our sugar, our cocoa, our cornstarch in here. Now all we have to do is whisk it together. If you do this, it, it helps get your cocoa mixed in there good. Now all we gotta do is add the wet ingredients. This is gonna come over here. We're gonna use a cup of evaporated milk. And you punch it twice so it can breathe and pour good. Some people don't know that. So you're gonna use a cup of evaporated milk. Your egg yellows. You can beat them up if you want to, but I'm gonna beat them anyway, so I don't ever do it. And a cup of water. And then you just beat it. Now we're gonna actually microwave it, but make sure you get it good and beat up good. 
before you throw it in there. Another thing you need to make sure to do is a lot of people think that their pudding didn't set up or it's gonna set up later in the refrigerator. This pudding sets up while you're cooking it. Do not put it in your pie shell unless it's already thick, okay? Cook it a little bit more. There you go. I usually save this to put this in because it gets chocolate on the counter if you don't. But it's so little it's liable to fall out. Now you put this in the microwave for three minutes. Three minutes. One, two, three, start. I've had people say my pudding was lumpy. That's because you didn't sear it good enough. The cornstarch can turn lumpy. So after it goes in the microwave for three minutes, you take it out and you whisk the, the dickens out of it, okay? Really, really, really good all along the bottom because that cornstarch wants to settle down in the bottom of the batter bowl. And you make sure you get it in there good. And then you're gonna put it back in there and cook it again. So while we're waiting on that, we'll do something else. Um, it only takes a minute to make this pie, so I'm going to prep an onion. No, let's prep the pepper while we're waiting. I'll move this. So this came out of the garden. We're going to make some um, hamburger steaks in a minute. So I'm just gonna cut some of this up to go in our hamburger steaks. Where's Honey Bunny? You can come over here to the left of me. Did you know I'm right-handed? I got so much on the table, he don't know which side to, which side is what. And I'm not, I'm not gonna make these big old humps uh, for my hamburger steak, or they'll make the meat fall apart. So if you're gonna put them in your hamburger steak, you ought to chop them pretty small. Alrighty, that's about all we need. And then we're gonna chop up a little onion. We've got a minute left on the clock. We are using our time wisely. So I'm gonna trim this onion a little bit. Let me show them what I do with my onion. When I got an onion, I like to take a little piece of it off so that it lays flat like that. And uh, if you've never done it, then there you go, there you go. I take the end off of it, then I take this and I go around the other side so that I can get out the, the outside peel. And then we'll finish it. We'll finish prepping it in just a second. But see how that looks now? It's flat on one side. It's got the root side still on. And you chop off, not the root side, but the other side. And then we'll prep it in just a second. And I don't always do them that way, but I do if I'm smart. If I be a smart. All right. Let's mix this up. Let me show it to you. Everybody's microwave, these are our potatoes for supper. Everybody's microwave is a little bit different. The wattage and everything. So you can tell it's just barely starting to try to thicken. Now for some reason you got a really powerful microwave. Microwave it the first time on two minutes instead of three. But you see how much I'm mixing it? Really mix it. If your pudding is lumpy, it's because you didn't whisk it good. And you let that corn start settle on the bottom before you mix it up good. So you don't want it to get thick before you mix it the first time. Okay? Now it's going back in for two minutes this time.
start. Alrighty, and we'll chop up our onion. So with the onion, the root side is on, and then I just take it and I, uh, you can come around a little bit so they can, I, I take the knife and then I just kind of make st strips like that. Not all the way through it, but to the root. Then you can use the end of an onion in a roast or something else. And then I just turn it back around and I slice it thin. We are actually gonna fry a few potatoes tonight. So we'll use our end of the onion and the potatoes, unless Chris don't want them in there. We don't normally eat onion in our potatoes. What do you want, Chris? You want them in there? Or not? I don't really want it in there. All right, we're not gonna put them in there. We're having these. We got them in our burgers, right? So I'll save this part. And I'm, I usually wrap it in foil. Show them my drawer right here, because we're, we're just waiting anyway. Come on up here. Uh, this is our drawer. I keep my trash bags in, my full, all of my storage bags and stuff. I just want y'all to see how I keep it, because it's handy when you can put it in a drawer like that. But if you put foil on your onion, it won't stink up the fridge. Hmm. All right, we're making good time. And if you don't have a microwave, you can always cook this on the stove. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You could take it uh, and cook it out on an open fire if you want to. <laughs> you yeah. can cook it any way you want. Why is everybody saying they're green cooking on the stove? No, I'm just saying. You know yeah. what? Some people think they can't use a microwave. So. I know. I don't know why. When it comes to pudding, nothing makes a prettier pudding than a microwave. And I guarantee if you ever try it with your banana pudding or your chocolate pie, you'll never do it on the stove top again, especially when it's hot in the summertime. You know, you don't have to sit there and stir it. Oh, do you know that, show me for a second, do you know that I've had more older women, older women in their 60s, 70s, and 80s brag so much about the way I make my pudding. So, um, I guarantee you, if that if they'd have had a way to do it, my mama actually made it this way, but look how pretty that is. It's beautiful. Can they see it? Mm-hmm. It's a little smoky, but yeah. It is perfect. Look at that. Well, I just splattered a piece. Okay, so once it comes out of the oven, oven, once it comes out of the microwave, I put in just a little bit of vanilla. And that's when I add a little bit of butter to it. I don't want to get onion on my, on my pudding. Gotta be careful. I put a couple of tablespoons of butter in it. Or you can put a whole quarter stick if you want to. And then it gets really, really shiny. I wanted to see how pretty and shiny it gets when the butter goes in. Just kicks it up a notch. Yep. All right, you're gonna come around on this side. We're gonna pour it out. sugar. All right, so there's our beautiful pudding. Look at that. It tastes the same as it is as it does if it's cooked on the stove top. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty. Pretty, pretty. All right, I got some holes in my crust. It's a little holy. We're going to put it in here. We're gonna hurry and mix up our meringue and put on top of it and get it in this um, little oven right quick. And we're gonna cook it, the meringue on it, while we're baking supper, okay? All right, we need to hurry. Your pie should be hot when you put your meringue on it. 
according to what I've been reading. And you know, everybody's got their opinions on why I'm reading weeks. Uh, they say that because egg whites are liquid, that the egg whites actually turn back to liquid. But everybody thinks that it's from the sugar, but it's actually the egg whites turning back into liquid form because they don't get cooked enough in the stove. So here, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of cream of tartar in it to make it pretty glossy. Yeah, I think it's over here. This is in her cookbook. I don't know which one this is. This is the first, one. first volume one cookbook. Well, it's not over there for some reason. Mm -hmm. Somebody stuck it in here. In here. Here's some. There it we'll is. It. Knew it. We'll use this. We gotta hurry. Yep. Yep. I'm always reaching and looking for stuff. Alright. You don't have to put in cream of tartar, but if you do, it makes a pretty meringue. your meringue. It's, see that? The first time I did it, it, it fell too quick. Now it's ready. Well, I think it's ready. <laughs> if you overbeat it, it'll mess it up too. It don't. As long as you get it on there. Chris loves meringue. That's all that matters. He has to have meringue on his banana pudding and his pies. Don't you, baby? have to, but I sure like that. Well, actually, I think I could have beat that another minute or two. Yeah, that's all right. Still be actually, good. it's not beat enough. Mm -hmm. Well, you usually use your uh, KitchenAid or your Bosch or something when you do the meringue. You usually don't do it with I it. I didn't get enough air put in it. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot harder to do with a hand mixer. And it's really hard to do with a whisk. Do you. you know what Granny used every single time she made a pie? And she made a pie all the time. She used this hand mixer like this. Yeah. Every time. Huh. And she had a hand mixer. She would get out her hand mixer to do her cake batter. But whenever she was making a top for a pie, she would just use her uh, little hand thing. All righty. It's going to be in there cooking, and I think I'm going to lower the temperature just a little bit. Yeah, last time it's too hot, wasn't it? Yeah. And I like to cook my pies. Um, oh, my Lord. I like to cook my pies.
for 20 minutes. Okay, now we're going to start cooking. And I meant to turn these on. And I did All right, we're going to get these skillets going. And the main reason we're having this for supper is because I wanted to be able to cook something while that pie cooked so I could go live for y'all tonight. All right, this is going to be for the potatoes. I'm not going to put in a whole, whole lot. And then our ground beef is going to go right here. We're going to mix it up real quick. And that pie is good by itself. You don't have to have meringue with it. So oh, no. You can if you don't want to make up, meringue. You can throw it in a graham cracker crust. Mm -hmm. Or you can just eat it as pudding and have some uh, graham crackers uh, with it. You yeah. know, or vanilla wafers with it. Sure can. My meat's right here. This was frozen in my freezer and I laid it out to thaw. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, my favorite seasoning in it. I'm going to put some salt pepper in it and then I'm going to put a little bit of my favorite seasoning in it. And then um, I'm, I think I'm just, can I use steak and chop? Yeah, whatever. All right. Well, okay, this one's not open. Here, you can show them what it is, and then I will uh, get it out of my little jar. I like steak and chop. It's in a lot of my recipes. Good. Good stuff. All right, I'm using my hands to mix this up. I'm throwing in an egg. And then we're going to get them in a skillet. Do you know what kind of hamburger meat that is? Since we got it out of the freezer, we probably don't. We usually get ground. It's 80-20. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We usually get 80-20. It's not steak. It has to be done on the inside. Mm -hmm. What I'm done. Don't get it done. So I got to get it done. You can tell by looking at it, it's got a good bit of fat in it. It's light colored. I'm so wild. All right, let's get in the skillet. Y'all ready? Hamburger steak. Don't make them so uh, tall, and it's easier to get them done in the middle when you gotta, you know, when you don't, you're not using steak for them. And we'll have these recipes in the uh, description and stuff for y'all. Yeah, once we get off a live, we can post them, but y'all have to give us time. And all of these are in the cookbooks, too, if you've got the cookbooks. You can buy cookbooks online. Mm -hmm. Y'all go buy some cookbooks. Yeah. I don't ever push my cookbooks like I ought to. All right. Now I gotta wash my hands and prep the potatoes. Oh, and they're so greasy. I should have had my hot water running. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get it off. Dawn takes freaks out of the way. I guess I should be using my Dawn. Yeah. Works pretty good. Let me use my Myers instead of a kitchen linen. 
it works better. Oh yeah, you gotta use dishwashing liquid. Yeah, that's much better. Didn't take long. Felt like it was forever. Whew. We're gonna have a quick supper. It Can took I... less than five minutes because the pie was on twenty. I mean it's just now down to fourteen something. Oh yeah, you just gonna cut is. them in the yeah. tree? Okay. Heck yeah, buddy. Gonna wash them over there. Watch out, turkey. <laughs> People up here and watch me kill them. They know I just made a pie. So the seat's full of dishes. But you know what? We're live. This is what happens when you really cook at home. Yeah. You don't make just one recipe and walk out of the kitchen. You gotta cook everything. Tomorrow I'm going to make that bean soup I was telling y'all about. I'm going to use all of our fresh tomatoes out of the garden in it, too. It's going to be good. I'm thinking about putting a little rice in it, too. Hmm. Rice and beans. Rice and beans. Don't that sound good? And tomatoes. I sure think it does. Hmm. Yeah. One night we could have it with our sausage hmm. that you bought. One night we could have it with Mexican food. Mm -hmm. We had tacos for lunch yesterday. Today we made fish, broccoli, and uh, believe it or not, a baked potato. And I'm having potato again. But I had to do something that y'all could watch while I was making my pie. All right. If you got hot grease... Keep going. If you've got hot grease, you want to make sure and dry off your potatoes. And don't drop water down in the grease and let it pop the dickens out of you. And if you don't want to dry them, then don't rinse them off. I don't know what else to tell you. But or you can cook them with the skins on. A lot of people like that good too. And I just slice them up over the skillet. Great. I don't have a lot of oil in there. So it shouldn't pop me. I'm not really getting them thick enough. I like them kind of thin. I like them to be crunchy. I'm a crunchy potato girl. Mom always made cut hers in cubes. They're hard to pick up with a fork. Yeah. About got to use a spoon to eat them if you really make them really small. We picked them up. You probably <laughs> used your hands, didn't you? No, we had to fork. Let me turn these in a little bit. I'm trying not to stand in y'all's life. You can um, quarter them too if you want to. This is way too much potato for us, really. I know. We put it in the refrigerator. Warm it up in the air fryer. Mm -hmm. On the weekend when we don't want to cook, Sunday's my cake posting day. We can heat up all our leftovers for Sunday. How's that pie looking? Will you look at it for me? It's got a ways to go. Is that too loud for you? It's over my arm, oh. under my arm, because I'm trying to, I was trying to stand this direction for y'all and it's a little awkward. 
but I'm done now. Now when I fry my potatoes, I turn them up on high. I salt and pepper them while they're frying. Can't hardly mess up a fried potato. Oh, some people can. <laughs> You think so? According to the kids, the oh. people that live in Ireland don't get them crunchy. Well, let's not make the people in Ireland mad. Well, I'm just saying, and some people don't. Like a lot of people, like a lot of these restaurants you go in and you get fried potatoes with the onions, mm -hmm. they're kind of soft. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I guess you can make But we like up. them kind of crunchy. Yeah. guess we make potato chips. Hmm. Ours are more like potato chips. Alright, I'm going to get me out a plate. So the pie's doing okay? Yeah. Is it getting brown? Just now starting to a little bit on the tips. So he's got 10 minutes, uh, 8 minutes, 53 seconds. I might all turn it up. Well, still got a whole 9 minutes left. I'll be careful. Be careful. I guess I'm gonna just say this. Okay, let's split these. I need my thing over there. Thank you. No. I usually, I don't like to put peppers and onions in my meat like Chris does, because it makes it just wanna fall apart. They just want to fall apart. What? I don't like to do it. I like to just put them in there and cook them around it. Chris likes to put them in it. When you put them in it, it does kind of want to fall apart more. And um, I did it his way tonight. Well, not if you don't put too much in it. I hardly ever do it that way. Uh-huh. Do what now? You think I just put too much? Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. What? I said, yeah. I'm going to blame it on you because you made me do it that way. <laughs> I, I never want to cook them that way. I love it. That All right, way. here we go. Oh, I'm making a salad. Yeah, you can come around this way. Okay. This is all garden stuff except for cucumbers, Mark. Believe it or not, we can't get a cucumber to uh, grow. I already washed all this. This and lettuce is from the garden. We're just going to have a green salad because Lord knows we need to have something that's halfway decent, good for us. Something green. Do what? I said something green. And a little bit of stuff. A little bit of stuff. I want to get my knife that I already got dirty. I don't have to dirty another one. This is onion. Green onion. Now the onion didn't come out of the garden, although we do have some in it. The squirrels kept pulling out on the... They didn't even eat all of it. They just dug them up. They ate some of them. They're just something else, some squirrels. Mm -hmm. Squirrels are a pain in the buttocks. Do what they want. Aren't they happy? Yes, they. It's not time, so our dogs are out. Oh, let me slice this up. Then we gotta get over here and flip this. That's, that piece of uh, lettuce was kind of sad looking. Hmm. All right, let's flip this dolly.
Okay. You did it. I did it. Okay. I want to look at the pie. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, you didn't have to turn it up. Let me turn it back down. It's probably. Want to cook. Oh, you don't think it's ready? No. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> now you know you can fry a little bit better than that. These potatoes. Potatoes take forever on this gas stove. Mm -hmm. They do. They look good. Alright, y'all. Y'all wanna ask us anything? Because we are caught up. Let me put some stuff up. Okay. Who's hungry? My dogs are. Yeah, they're definitely hungry. All walking around me. All right, we're gonna put the pie right here. And it comes out. Sugar up. I'll show you how a real kitchen works. Not a penny they show kitchen. Okay, you had a question about why do you bake the pie for 20 minutes? To make sure all the egg gets done. Because it's meringue. Because it's meringue. It's egg whites. And you see how runny they were? They'll turn back to liquid if you don't get them cooked. So if you just put it in there and torch it like they do on these little cute cooking shows mm -hmm. with a torch or you just put it in there and broil it it's going to turn back to liquid mm -hmm. um, so you want to cook those egg whites I'm going to be done why didn't you tell me my, my skillet was off the eye your skillet's off the eye I'm mad about that mm -hmm. and we'll have some people are asking like what degree and all that kind of stuff the recipe was is going to be yeah we'll post it for yeah you. we'll post it there's always recipe with the uh, yeah i'll copy and paste yeah. all these recipes like the same thing that's uh, in that. yeah we'll copy and paste them for you as soon as we're not live but we're live so all we can do right now is cook mm -hmm. it's cooked and somebody asked if we only use cast iron, but we use all types. I will be of... honest with you. For the most part, I use cast iron if I'm frying, okay? If I'm making cornbread, if I'm making a hoe cake, a biscuit in the oven, um, I use my cast iron. Uh, I use a nonstick skillet when I'm making something that I don't want it to stick. Uh, I mean, cast iron, it don't stick as long as you got enough grease in it. Anyway, um, let me get this pie out. Here we go. But for my other baking, my other needs, this looks about more like my granny said, because her meringue was always about like that, because yeah. she did hand beat it. Yeah, I'm sure she did. Um, anyway, I use stainless steel. You can come show them. We use all stainless steel for boiling, stews, vegetables, steaming, that kind of stuff. And then down here you'll see cast iron. I have one nonstick pot that I use for green beans. I have a couple of nonstick skillets for eggs, scrambling eggs and frying eggs and making omelets. And, uh, it's really about all you need. Mm -hmm. For real, see. But you can keep buying stuff and keep buying stuff. Because that's what we do. <laughs> now, I got stuff over there. Yeah, too. we got all kinds. You can show them my stuff yeah. over there. We got brazers and I've got a brazer and... for when we're bracing a big piece of meat or chicken. Yeah. I've got a brazer for when we're bracing a big piece of meat or chicken. I've got a cast iron wok. Let's see it. Yep. Flappy it. 
But now I gotta have a walk, and I love my cast iron. But now, if you want to get a carbon steel walk, I have one of those on the website too, because they're actually supposed to get hotter than cast iron does. Really? Yes. So, like, it would be a lot quicker to cook on this stove if I had the carbon steel. Hmm. Looking good. Get in there. You got that way off over here. Yeah. It's way over there. This one. Oh. Yeah, there you go. When you're on one side of a skillet cooking like we're live and stuff, unless I'm walking around and I can't walk around because I'd be in front of y'all if I did, these skillets slide real easy on these new stoves. That's one thing I don't like about them. Because you don't have just a grate for what you're cooking on. You have a grate that goes all the way across the stove and everything wants to slide across it. Mm -hmm. If I had my druthers, I would have an old-fashioned gas stove if I had it to do over again. I really would, y'all. I'm not just saying it. I'm for real. With just four separate burners. They don't even hardly make them like that anymore. They do. But you got to get, you know, just basic one and usually don't have a cleaner. I like for the oven to be self-cleaning so I don't have to scrub the crap out of it. I need to turn this around. And I don't know why. Yes, because it's where the fuel comes in. But one side of skillet's always hotter than the other side. It don't matter how much your stove costs. It still does it. It still does it. I'm gonna put this up and then we're gonna eat. Let's do it. Y'all ready to eat? Sure they are. We are. Do you want those brown No, nah, it's fine. Done. Mm -hmm. Look good. That's the main thing. Look good. Some pretty potatoes. Now, when I make my oil for the potatoes, I use a little bit of corn oil in the bottom of the skillet, and then I put in uh, a small pat of butter, about two or three tablespoons, because it makes them taste so good. Mm -hmm. Sure does. Look at that pie. And they should be done. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to take them out and put them on our plate. I'll give you the big one. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good idea. Well, I guess I better put it on top. Still over next to the potatoes. Yeah. There you go. You're so smart, baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're done with you. It's hot. Did I have the oven on? Yeah. I'm crazy. <laughs> I was going to make that pie in the big oven, and then I forgot to turn it yeah. off. And here it no is wonder it's so hot in here. 94 degrees outside today. Uh -huh. down here. There you go. Oh, let's open up this door because we got an air conditioner on the wall in there. Yep. Okay. Taters. And salad. <laughs> there you go. Just like at a restaurant. Yep. Steak, potato, and salad. You want Thousand Island? Yeah. We like uh, our favorite. Lord, that like to have been a mess. Thank goodness it didn't get on the floor. Huh. It barely got on the floor. That was my sour cream from lunch. We had it on our potatoes. Uh, Chris likes Ken Steakhouse Thousand Island. Good stuff. It is good stuff. All right, and I'm just going to have... Look, it didn't make a mess on my fridge. Okay. Well, I've got to wipe it off just a little bit or no. it, it won't ever come off. That'll be fine. 
my refrigerator was so clean. It just got polished today. Somebody asked me what I used for my stainless steel, and I don't know that I ever showed them. I'm going to show it to y'all so y'all know because it works really good if you're interested. Because you look how pretty all my stainless steel is here in here all the time. That's what we clean it with. Lord, there's sour cream over here. Well, Tammy. I know. i got to go. Um, sorry, y'all. I'm distracted. You want something to dip your steak in? Ketchup? Yep, ketchup. There you go. Mustard, ketchup, thousand island. And I don't think I'm going to eat any dressing on mine. Okay. I'll have it plain because I've already went over my limits. Today. All right, we're gonna taste it, y'all. Y'all ready? I'm sorry we've been on here so long, but look at our pretty pie. And I guess I could cut it for them. Mm -hmm. And y'all, I eat ketchup all over my potatoes. I don't eat it on my meat like Chris does. I, I just eat the meat. Um, but I'll let y'all see that this is good and done. And let me see if I can just cut this pie. It's going to be kind of a mess because it's still hot. So y'all bear with it. And we would not cut it if we were not live. No, we would not. So. Yeah, somebody said a lot of people get wound up you when we do pie. that, but we have to. So y'all can I sit here and wait. I be able to see what it looks like. I'll tell you what it looks like. Green's chocolate pie. But it's so hot that it hasn't got to set, you know, it's hot. So it's going to be a little bit runny looking. But not bad. Mm -hmm. That just looks good. That's all that looks. There you go, y'all. Mm -hmm. I guarantee one thing. It's got flavor. So, if you're watching and you're the one that cooked it and it didn't have enough flavor, you just need to put more cocoa in it. You probably didn't put it in enough heaping cocoa. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. My granny would whip one like that, one of those up so quick. Now, she never made her pie crust. But boy, she always had a pie made. Most of the time, sweet potato or chocolate. All right. I hope y'all enjoyed tonight. Just here, I feed you. So, y'all have a blessed day. And thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. Y'all share this video and hit that like button. Bye, I love you.